welcome believers all over the world. We are so glad you could join us, as it's always our privilege to encourage you in the Word of God. So like, share, and let everyone know we're on the air. brings forth transformation. So whenever you it's revealing to your mind who you are in God and who God is in you, then you will have a transformation of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and you will grab a hold to the word and say, wait a minute, that's greater in he that is in me than he that is in this world. And so therefore, I can have victory. I can't say, devil, this means war. Now you need to understand one thing. Everything you need has already been provided. The enemy don't want you to see that. And I hear God saying, if you want it, come and get it. Because he provided everything you need in heaven. That's why Jesus said, pray that thy kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. Everything that you need has been provided. Oh, nudge your neighbor say, what you waiting for? What you waiting for? What are you waiting for? If you want God to turn your husband around, what you waiting for? Grab a hold to the horns of the other say, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that every time I lay my hands on his head, you transform his mind. Welcome believers all over the world. This is Tim and Vicki, and you are tuned in to Hear and Be Healed, where we're preaching the word of God to build your faith so you can begin to access all the things of God concerning your benefits as a kingdom citizen. We are constantly continuing on the word, teaching, uh, calling, manifesting the hundredfold. This is a word that's deep in my heart, and we're going to stick with it until we see manifestation. Matter of fact, uh, the study is getting so in-depth that I got a lot of notes. We haven't even scratched the surface yet. I think right now we're still trying to just build, uh, how can you say, build, dig up the fallow ground um, so that we can put this word in you wholeheartedly. And so I, I begin to see that it's turning to something that's very in-depth. And so Right now, it's up on my heart to even see if God will bring a book out of this here so we, that we can begin to share with the body of Christ because this is something that, a parable that is very powerful. Matter of fact, listen to this. Jesus said that if you don't understand this parable, then how shall you know all other parables? So this parable, I think, is very vital for the believer. And so I want you to understand that when we're trying to teach this, we're not teaching in a way. Sometimes I'm very passionate about it, but I don't want, like I said, I don't want to throw us like a stumbling block before you. It's not the intention. The intention is to show you that how vital it is and how critical it is for you to get this word because as you're going to see, the, the odds are really stacked against the believer. And what Jesus is trying to see is give you, show you the urgency and the uh, very importance of getting this uh, because the enemy is fighting uh, the word and you getting the word and you understanding the word because he knows what the word can do. We understand that by faith, this whole world was created uh, Framed by the word of God. Everything was created by the word of God. Nothing was created without the word of God. When God stepped out on this earth, in this world, and he said the earth was void and without form, he says he spoke things into existence and they were so, and he said it was very good. And so this parable here is something that I know that the body of, uh, the body of Christ needs. And so uh, we're going to get in it. We're not going to move on it. Like I was sharing with my son, when you get... A elite athletes and musicians, they're proficient in their skills and their craft because of what they practice over and over again. Mm -hmm. And not just practice, but perfect practice. In other words, they want to become pr proficient. They want their skills to be to the point to where everything they do is instinctive. And the Word of God has to get us to its instinctive. Um, and so it, we're only going to be as successful in the things of God, in the kingdom of God, to the degree of the revelation that we have in the Word and the proficiency that we have in the Word of God. If we don't have that proficiency, the enemy is going to always trick us. And you'll be strong at one point, but if you're not consistent in that, he'll come with something else from a different angle, and you'll fall for it. And notice here, the enemy is relentless, but we that maintain the word and stand on the word, understanding that if the word is a sword, if you're going to be a proficient um, offender, you're going to have to be proficient in your weapon. And our weapons are not carnal. And there's no way you can read the Bible a couple of times and quote a few scriptures and think that you're going to, you know, thwart the enemy. No, you got to be proficient in this. And so what I want you to do is, like I said always, be hungry enough to hear the word over and over and over again. You've got to develop that hunger for that, that thirst for that. The Bible says, he that hunger and thirst out the righteousness shall be filled. 
And so I had to develop a hunger for the word. I was once like that. I had to hear something new and something exciting, something inspiring, something motivating that I got to hear. And, oh, I've heard that. And then the Spirit of God said, well, it's time to stop hearing and start hearkening. And so the idea is you don't have anything, you hadn't understood anything until you begin to manifest that which you've heard. And if you're not, if you're not manifesting it, then you hadn't really heard it. And so when I looked at this parable, I began to understand that, wait a minute. Jesus is letting us see just how vital it is for the believer to get it because the majority of the, not just the body of Christ, but the world, the, the, the majority of the world is not going to be fruitful. So what we're going to do is we're going to pray and get in the Word uh, and, and just teach. Like I said, we're not, taking our, uh, we're not rushing. We're going to take our time because I need you to get this. Now, one of the things we said last week is that to get a faith project, Get something that you believe in God for, something that you want manifested in your life, whatever it is, uh, whether it's for the calling that God has upon your life. I told you my calling is that the scripture says that he healed them all. And so my faith project is everyone that um, I pray for, we pray for, gets healed. That's God's word. Um, and, and I'm not moved by what other people think. I'm not moved by indoctrinations and all these sacred cows that says why God's not healing, why God's not moving, why God's not doing anything. I don't read that in the scripture. And I said that we're not going to look at men because men fail. Jesus is our, our, our image that we look at and the one who we follow after his example. We're not going to find that failure in him. And so if we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, he's going to perfect our faith. And so that's the only way our faith is going to be perfected. Not looking at man. Men fail. Men make mistakes. But when we look at Christ, Christ has never failed, never made mistakes. And he said, the worst that I do, you should do also. The reason why we keep failing is because we keep looking at men that fail. But if we keep our eyes on Jesus and not be uh, focused on anything else, any distractions, we will uh, be able to do what he says we can do. And he's not a liar. So if Jesus said, greater work shall you do, then I'm going to believe what he said and I believe what anybody else said. Well, you know, that was Jesus. Well, no, stop. Well, matter of fact, it even validates it. That was Jesus who said, you know, greater work shall we do. And so I'm going to uh, follow his lead and believe his truth. And so we're going to get in his word. But before we do that, I forgot to tell uh, our production manager to put together some highlights. We went out to Oasis Village, got a chance to minister in song. Everything didn't go as, as planned, but like uh, my bishop say, one monkey don't stop, no show. And we went on with the show. Uh, I believe a few people were blessed, um, got to open up a, um, an invitation to minister to the church, Greater Grace uh, Faith, I think that's the name of it is, and so we're excited about doing that, and just kind of continue to do what God calls us to do, because this gospel of the kingdom has to be preached, and whatever tool we can use to do that, we're necessarily going to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, without further ado, I do want to stay consistent as always. And bless the tithes and offerings of those that are sending their tithes and seeds of gift into the ministry. So we're going to be faithful over that. We thank God for your continual giving. It's not that we're soliciting. We believe God by everything, by faith. But those that give, we want to be faithful to do uh, and be the, the stewards over your finances and the priest over your finances and pray that God will multiply your seeds. So and that's what Paul did when the Philippian church gave to them. He says, not that you give to my account that I need anything but, uh, for my necessity, but that it may abound to your account, and that my God should supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. And then he said, he gives seed to the soul and bread to the eater, and multiply the seed sown. So anything that you give to us, I don't care if it's one dollar, we take it serious, and we thank God for it, and we want to see God multiply that seed sown. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, we're going to pray in Jesus' name. And my, my son's going to put up if, you know, on, on the screen some other ways of how you can be a blessing if you desire to do so. So, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Lord, for the yes. opportunity of those that sow into this ministry and have confidence in the work that we're doing. And, Lord, that we see that everything that you give, whether it is a sacrifice or just a free will offering, we take it serious, Lord. And Lord, you say, given it shall be given to you, good measures pressed down, shaken together, running over. As men give it to our bosom, let it be given back unto us. For the same measure that we measure out, it shall be measured back to us again. So Lord, for I thank you right now that the seed that they sown, I commanded to be multiplied to them. In Jesus' mighty name, and we give you praise for it. Amen. Amen. Now what we want to do is, we're not going to read the whole foundation of Scripture because we're going to be going back to it, you know, 
over and over and over again. But what I do want to do to start for our foundation today, as we're talking about manifesting the hundredfold, that's the whole foundation. But we're breaking it down in parts. And so the part that God wants me to talk about tonight is to be fruitful, mm -hmm. to be fruitful. Matter of fact, if we go back to the order of first mention, what was the first commandment? The first commandment was not thou shalt not. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, and thou shalt have no other God before him. That was not the first commandment. And those were laws instituted. The first commandment uh, really is in Genesis 1 and 28. So we're going to go back and find out what that commandment was. And because that's the thing that Jesus wanted to establish back here on earth to fulfill those things. So what we're going to do is we're going to read our foundation of scripture. I wrote them all down here. Okay. Uh, we're going to read our foundation of scripture. And I want you to listen to this because it's going to lead us into what he's teaching us about being fruitful. Uh, Matthew 13 and 8. Now, we start in Matthew 13 and 1, all the way down to 23, where he talks about the parable. He shows it to the people in the parable. The disciples say, well, Lord, why do you speak to them in parables? And he explains that. Uh, there has to be a hunger and a thirst for it. So he throws it out in the parables, and he says, okay, he that have an ear to hear, let him hear. And so the whole thing is about the pursuit, the pursuit after um, bringing forth development and getting results. Asking it shall be given. Seeking ye shall find. Knocking the door shall be opened. If you, under, if you see that, everything is about the pursuit. Hebrews 11, 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God, for they that come to him, they that come to him must believe that he is and then he, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There's a pursuit. And so everybody knows there's a thrill in the pursuit, you know. The, the, the damsel likes it when the man pursued her. And that's one thing I found that was so funny. I was, I was talking to someone. I says, it's amazing that there may be a young lad that the woman, the, the fair lady is not kosher to, and she would have nothing to do with him. And he's just constantly, constantly pursuing, constantly pursuing. And when he stops to pursue, guess what? She misses it. Mm. Regardless of the fact that she was going to give him a time, give him a time of day, but it was the pursuit that she, she, she enjoyed. But when that pursuit stopped, they're like, well, what happened to Johnny? Johnny pursuing somebody else. He, he felt like he couldn't win. Mm -hmm. So God loves the pursuit. And so we're pursuing after him. We're chasing him. There was a book that was written called God Chasers. You know, we're not, we're not being faddish about anything. Uh, uh, David said, as the deer panted after the water, brook, so does my soul, long as after thee. So God, is, he loves the pursuit, and so we are to, to pursue God. And so as we go through this teaching, I want you to pursue the things of God. And, and, and I'll tell you, this teaching is not about being materialistic, but it's about being able to experience everything that God has for us. We're not going to make God look bad by saying we're serving this God that can do all things, can heal, can deliver, can set free, can save, can provide, and that we look like we're children that are set aside in poverty, and it makes God look like a, a poor father. You know, God knows how to take care of his people, that the people may look at us and say that we are a delightsome land. And so, but that has to come after us pursuing and hungering for the things of God. And so if Jesus said there's a possibility for it, then I believe that we should strive. He says, whatever you find in your hands to do, do it with what? All of your might. Not just a little bit. And so we should take the things of the kingdom very serious. That's why we should be vigilant, be sober. And so uh, we're talking about manifesting the hundredfold. So our focus is not on wayside, thorny ground, stony ground, not even 30, 60. Our focus is on the hundredfold. In other words, we want God to perfect in us and to make proficient in us. Everything he says we can have, because I'm telling you this here. Do you believe Jesus operated anything less? Mm -hmm. Jesus operated in what? Hundredfold. The Bible said God didn't give him the spirit by measure. He operated in the fullness of God. And so seeing that Christ is in us, and this is how I look at it, dwell at the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus is not in us in parts. He's not in us in, in measures. He's in us in full totality. So we as believers should not minimize him or limit him, but say, I want all the fullness of God that is in me to operate in me. So therefore, I have all sufficiency in God mm -hmm. and to operate in that. But it's all about a mindset. 
we're going to be only as what we think. So if we think we're small, if we think we're grasshoppers, we're going to think everybody else perceive us that way, and we're going to be limitless in the things that we do, and we'll never achieve anything. The Bible says we are more than conquerors. So let's look at that, 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 that the scripture here that we're going to use as our foundation, Matthew 13 and 8. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Now, I know that's part of the, the scripture, but if you want to read it in context for you that desire to catch up, we're reading from Matthew 13, chapter 13 from verse 1 all the way to verse 23, where Jesus talks about the parable of the sower and the seed, and then he begins to explain it from verse 18 all the way down to 23 to his disciples. But I wanted you to see this part right here. It says that, but others fell on the good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, and that's what we're going for. We're focusing on the hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Now, a lot of people are always talking about, this is talking about spiritual things, and then, but that's, they stop right there. So if we're talking about spiritual things, then are you... Um, elaborating that this is just salvation. There's no such thing as 30% salvation, 60% salvation, 100% salvation. Right. You're either saved or you're not. Mm -hmm. So the things about it, this is talking about the kingdom. We get too caught up in being focused on one part of our ministry. Uh, there are people that are very passionate and very, how can I say, anointed for the salvation message. But that's just one part of the kingdom. I always tell people, if you go to the church, they're still talking about getting saved. They're still talking about getting born again. And they've been preaching it there for 18 years. And my question is, once you're saved, what then? Now you've got to teach them how to live, how to walk by faith, how to become effective and grow up and be discipled so that you can become full, grown, and mature in every area of your life. So now that once you're saved and you're in the kingdom, how do I get equipped? How do I get you know, get off of milk and begin to eat strong meat? How do I begin to walk in the gifts and exercise the gifts? How do I begin to call those things that be not as though they were? How do I begin to exercise my dominion and my right as a, a kingdom citizen that I do not become just a member, but I become a citizen? And I think that's what we miss it in the church. We make people members, but we, not, we don't bring them into the place where they're citizens. When you understand that you are a citizen, you, then you begin to understand your rights and your privileges and what you have in God and the things of God and the kingdom of God, and you'll walk therein. Right. And so he says here that brought forth fruit, mm -hmm. brought forth fruit. So we are commanded to bring forth fruit. So we said that if we look at the order of first mention, that what we were commanded, the first commandments, we'll go to Genesis 1.28. Now let's read this. Genesis 1.28, read that for me. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now when Christ came back, tell me that he didn't walk in that and exercise all that authority. Mm -hmm. He he, he had dominion over the seas. The disciples say, what manner of man is this that even the fish and the sea obey? That, 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 that's the awesome God that we serve. And so you got to hear me. We cannot let anything that we see or go through or experience take away from the fact that we serve an awesome God that gives us all the victory. All the victory, all the victory through Christ Jesus. And so that seeing that we serve a mighty Savior, a mighty King, who can separate us? Who shall we fear? Nothing or no one. Yes. Nothing or no one. And so that's why I say we look to him. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's going to develop our faith, but we must keep our eyes focused on him. But we must understand that it is the word that is here because the Bible said in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And we understand that Christ is the word, and we have to have that word in us. Mm -hmm. And so as we have that word, it's his word that is spoken of us that we have confidence in. And we say, hey, my rock, um, my heart is anchored in the fact that I hear what God said in his word, and I believe that. And so we have been commanded to be fruitful. So now the word must produce fruit in our life. The word must produce fruit in our life. Mm -hmm. Just to give you a couple of examples. 
So now if we're sick in our body, if we're sick in our body, we grab the word of God and says, by his stripes, we are healed. Okay, I'm experiencing the fact that I'm sick in my body. But God says, hey, no longer say that you're sick. Don't even use that. He says, let the weak say that I'm strong. So the idea is you call things that be not as though they were based upon the fact that that's God's word, not by the, sick, the, the, by the fact that you feel that, you experienced it. No, it's what God says. And with his stripes, we were healed, as Peter, 1 Peter 2.24 says. So the idea is taking God's word and we stand on that and say, this is my truth. I'm not worried about the fact. I know the fact is my body says I'm, I'm sick. I'm, that's what the, the body says. But I, I'm not going to acknowledge that. I'm going to be like my father Abraham. And considering not his body, considering not what he was going through, and considering not the fact of the things that he was experiencing, dead, Sarah's womb dead, his body dead, dried up. He didn't consider those things. What he considered was God's word. I'm not going to look at my condition. I'm going to look at what God said. And if God says, I am the father of many nations, that's what I stand on. And so for Abraham to make that word fruitful in his life, he had to believe God. And it said that when he believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he didn't stagger at the promises. Now, the reason why he wasn't able to stagger is because he had to keep that word before him. So that's why God said, okay, Abraham, well, Abram, he says, I keep telling you you're the father of many nations, but I can see you only shake your head when I say it. Yes, sir, I believe it. Yes, sir, I believe it. He says, but I don't, I don't believe you got it yet. He says, what I'm going to have to do to find out if you're fully, con fully persuaded mm -hmm. is I'm going to change your name, and I'm going to hear it come out of your mouth. Now, the Abraham showing forth his faith that he was fully persuaded what God said, he had to sit, tell the people what his name was. Now, think about it. When God says, your name is no longer Abram, but Abraham, I am declaring that you are the father of many nations. Mm -hmm. So God's watching Abraham to see what's going to come out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. Are you going to go and when you talk to people, introduce yourself, are you going to say Abraham or are you going to say Abram? So God's watching to see how he's going to exercise his faith to see what's going to come out of his mouth. So when it says, who art thou? Uh, my, name, uh, my name's Abraham. Abraham, the father of many nations. Well, what is your lineage? Who, who, what are your offspring? What are you, where's your seed? Well, it's in me. Well, how do you know it's in me? God's word. I, I, I have God's word in me. It's in my loins. And so therefore, as he began to continue to tell everybody who his name was, he was declaring what God says, and it was accounting for righteousness. That was his faith being released because faith speaks. Mm -hmm. Faith called things. Yes, right. And so when he began to say, I, my name is Abraham, he was said, I'm the father of many nations. And this is Sarah, the, the, the mother of many nations. So the idea is they had to say something. So it had to, God had to get it out of their mouth. And so what? It was the word that begin to be sown, and there's a process that takes place, and then you begin to see that all of us now are the offspring or the product of the word that Abraham took from God and stood up on, and that word, I don't, <laughs> to me, we are the hundredfold. Now, hundredfold doesn't really mean hundred times. Mm -hmm. Hundredfold means the optimum results that you get from a particular incident. You know, like I said, if you had, you know, there's no way a cow can have 100 cow, cattle, calves. <laughs> no, she'd give up. She said, I don't want to do <laughs> Two is a, is, a, is a problem. You know, if you get two of them, my God, that is, you exceeded 100 fold. So she's supposed to produce one calf. The same way that anything else, tree, uh, apple tree, are supposed to produce a certain amount of apples. And so the idea is, is the optimum results of that, of, of that which is sown. So we're going to talk about produce. So the idea is getting that hundredfold. So we are the, uh, the evidence or the results of the word of, that God gave Abraham being the father of many nation as the hundredfold that is manifested. And guess what? That come through Jesus Christ. He is that one that has multiplied. Jesus said, except the seed that fall on the ground and die, it abides alone. But we thank, you, thank him that he came and he died and he has produced many offsprings um, by that death. And so we are commanded to be fruitful. So let's go back. Let's take our time. The word of God is supposed to produce in our life, whatever God says. So the reason why we're really staying on this here is because we are the epitome of the body of Christ. And we're not supposed to look sick, anemic, broke, disheartened, 
disenchanted, mm -hmm. discouraged, oppressed, that, that's not how the body's supposed to look. Mm -hmm. If we're going to say that we're the, the body of Christ, then we're supposed to be whole because Christ is whole. Right. We're supposed to be delivered because Christ is delivered. We're supposed to be walking in all things concerning provision that all of our needs are met according to his riches and glory. Jesus, he says, don't even worry about what you're going to eat. Think about that. We're not even supposed to worry about what we're going to eat, drink, or put on. He says, that's not your problem. That's not your issue. What you should be doing is seeking the kingdom, understanding how my father and I operate things. Mm -hmm. If you go over there in, in a place where you have rulerships of kings, the subjects doesn't, don't worry about things. Why? It's, it's, it's up to the, 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 the queen or the king to provide for them. So Jesus said, no, your heavenly father, this is a good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So all of your provision comes from him. So don't, why are you worried about those things? Your heavenly father knows what you have need of, even before you ask. So the idea is you understand how you operate the kingdom. And I like to use this analogy that in my house, it is my job as a father to provide protection, provision, everything in this house needs. Food in the pantry, food in the refrigerator, food in the cabinet. So that when my children get hungry, now when they were young, we had to do the feeding. But by the time they get two or three years old, they know how to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich. They get to up to age, they know how to cook a few meals, Google it, put it together. And, and what's in the kitchen is them. It's the, it belongs to them. They do not have to come and ask me, well, Daddy, can I have this? Daddy, can I have that? Now, I know in some homes they may do that because, you know, your children, they just greedy and they eat up everything. You don't watch out. But, but all things being equal, for me, I put it in here. It's in the refrigerator. Make you a sandwich. You know how to make a sandwich. Get in there and make that sandwich so they don't have to ask me. They get hungry. They go in there and get them something. Why? Because it's already provided. They don't worry about it. All the food is in here, and they're talking about, man, what am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? What am I going to put on? They don't have to think about that. Why? Because it's already available. That's right. And so the idea is how God said everything you need is already available. Understand how to operate the word of God. Let the word begin to produce results in your life. Don't let the word fall by the wayside. Provision is here. So think about it. If my children came in and said, well, I said, well, look, look, baby, I tell my daughter, everything you need is in, in, the, is in, in, is, is in the house, the refrigerator, wherever, the pantry, wherever you go. Mm -hmm. Everything you need for food is already in there. And she, it would be crazy for her to come to her mother, go to her sibling and say, man, I'm sure I'm hungry. I'm, you know, what, what I'm going to eat? And they're like, okay, I thought I heard when dad said, everything you need concerning food is in the refrigerator. Right. Why are you asking me that? You know what to do. What do you, what do, you do? Well, I guess I go in and find what I want to eat and just take it and prepare and eat it. Right. Thank you. That's how the word produces results in your life. So if God has always given the words that everything you need, that's why Paul, say, Paul says, hey, be not anxious for anything. But by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. So he's giving us a word to say, okay, I'm going to take this word. So instead of me worried about things, let me operate the kingdom. Because he says, I'm not supposed to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, don't worry. So how do I do this? I take the word of God and I say, okay, I'm not going to be anxious about anything. I'm going to go to God and make my request known. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus says, when you stand praying, believe you receive. So I'm going to set myself in a position, in a posture that before I even ask, let me get myself together. Mm -hmm. I believe that I receive. You believe you receive before you even ask. But see, guess what? If you're not proficient in that word, if you're not constant in the word, and that word's not in you, and it's not abiding, when tragedy hits, when you're challenged, when you're confronted with the adversary who's going to come and try you with tribulations and trials, and the wrong thing comes in my oh, Lord, what am I going to do? See, the word wasn't in there, and the word wasn't, it, it, it's not proficient. It's not deeply rooted in you. And so guess what? The wrong word comes out. And so now you see that that word is, as the Bible says, unfruitful, and it does not produce fruit. But if that tragedy comes, you say, wait a minute. Uh -uh. My God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And then you go on about your business. And so my daughter will come in here and say, you know what? I'm hungry. Fix a sandwich, sit down, eat. Satisfied. Why? The word has produced results that I see it. Everything you need concerning food is in the refrigerator. She got hungry, and instead of coming to me, asking or worrying about it, she went right to the refrigerator and operated as if it was already done. So she already saw herself sitting down and eating, mm -hmm. wondering how and when and how to, and what to do was not even an a, a issue or concern. She just did it. 
And so, what, so when it comes to God's word, if God said it, that sells it, I walk into it, and I don't, I don't give it no other thought. So now, he commands that word to be fruitful. So let's say you don't have any finances. And, you know, we, we do the prayer line, and a lot of people constantly, I want you to pray that God bless my finances. Now, I used to pray and ask him to bless God, bless the finances, and I believe that God is faithful. But then we can't pray against a principle because it won't work. It, 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 it'll short circuit. So if you're not a giver and if you don't tithe or you don't give your offerings, and I know it's a big debate about tithes and offerings, but the idea that we're supposed to be a person that give. As you're free to receive, free to give, the Bible says um, God desires, the loves a cheerful giver. And so that we give as we purpose in the heart. We, you know, we believe in, we, I don't want to get into a big debate, because, but, but if you're going to prosper, the Bible sets a principle. As long as the earth remains, there shall be seed, time, and harvest, winter and summer, hot and cold. These things are still in the earth. Regardless, we can debate all day long whether you believe it or not. Yes. Gravity is gravity. Whether you believe you jump off a building, you won't die. <laughs> Trust me. I don't care what you think. You can say, well, I jump off the building, I'm going to fly. I, hey, you can believe that if you want to. But there's a principle that says if you don't do anything other than what you, you need to do, if you don't have no wings, if you don't have no airplane, you jump off the building if you want to. That principle is going to operate called gravity and it's going to pull you down to the ground and we'll be praying to raise you up from the dead. You can't break the principle. And so there are people that are calling the prayer line and asking us to pray things that are breaking God's principles. And I want you to pray that God, you know, bless my finances. And my, my question is, okay, now I wanna, are you a giver? I don't like somebody that I tithe there. Are you a giver? Do you give anything? Because this is giving, it should be given to you. At least we'll cover that part. And well, you know, I can't afford to give. No. Mm -mm. Because he gave you scripture. He says he gives seed to the soil and bread to the eat and multiply your seed so on. So you can at least start with a seed. God gives a seed. And you can hold God to that word. Say, so, well, God, don't, if you say, well, I don't have anything to give, trust me. You have something to give. Nobody can. You, you'll, be, you'll be calling God a liar. I, I, you, you can go in and find something that you're not using, you know, sell it, do a garage sale, get the seed, and then begin to operate the principles of God for your finances. And don't, 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 get, don't get religious on me because the idea is if you need money to pay your bills, uh, you can take your laundry down, your clothing down there to the um, light company and see if they'll take that in exchange. There's no such thing as barter and exchange anymore. They want some M-O-N-E-Y to pay that light bill. And so what you do is you operate the principles of God. You say, okay, I need to pay my light bill. I don't need this here. Let me go and sell it or, you know, garage sale. Take this here and pay my light bill. Same way as thing with the God. You take that which you need, each seed uh, is sown after its kind, begets, produces after its own kind. And so if you want finances, then you begin to, you know, give into the things of God for the purpose of the things of God. And Paul says when you do that, then my God shall supply all your needs according to riches and glory. And so the idea is we can't go against the principles of God. And so a lot of people want uh, us to go against the principle of God when he asks us to pray. Those things don't work. I can pray all day long, then you'll get mad at me. Tomorrow. He ain't got no power. I asked him to pray for my finances, and I, and I lost everything. Well, no, it wasn't that I, my prayer didn't work. It's just that you didn't work the principle. Same way with, with forgiveness. He says you can pray all day long, but he says if you haven't forgiven, your prayer is none of all. Yeah. Husbands and wives. He says, hey, get that stuff fixed between you right. because it'll hinder your prayers. Okay, men, if you're asking, but you're not receiving, why? Because you're asking a miss. Why? You may heap it up on your own lust. Mm -hmm. Principles are involved. And so we have to, so we have to look at all the things that make our seed or make the word unfruitful. The odds are stacked against us. The odds are stacked against us. Um, I can go to a whole lot of things, but for something to be produced, you think about it, a seed being sown in the ground. It has a lot to go against it. It's right. put in soil. It's covered up. It's packed down. Everything's trying to stop the seed from growing. But if the seed gets planted, it's going to do what it's supposed to do. And we have to allow it to do that. So the idea is make up your mind and settle in your heart that I have been commanded to be fruitful. So the word of God must be fruitful in my life and it must produce. So now I want to stop right here and just make this reiteration. When we talk about the different types of soil, this is twofold. The Spirit of God showed me this here because I'm going to bring this up next time. It's twofold. 
it's the types of people, four types of people. We can look at it as four types of people. People that are wayside, people that are stony, people that are thorny, and people that have good ground. Or you can say that there's four dimensions of one person. And, and we can all, that's the good news. Okay, when I first came, when I first heard the gospel, I didn't understand it. I turned it off. Then I eventually, they kept, somebody kept preaching it to me. That's why I say one water, one soul, one, uh, once, you know, when you're preaching, one water, one plant, but God give the increase. So let's keep preaching the word, even to your children. You believe in God to hear your children, save your children. Just keep preaching the word because eventually, they, at first, they don't want to hear it. They, I mean, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to understand it. Satan come and take it immediately. You keep on preaching it. Eventually, they'll say, hmm, I kind of agree with that. And they'll receive it with joy. But then, for some reason, it don't take root and it leaves. And then, then that, the, that third dimension where they receive it with gladness, and then maybe some persecution come and snatch it. But then finally, they get grounded and say, you know what? I done been through hell and high water. I've been up and down with God. I've been in and out of church, in and out of God. She says, no, I'm tired of this wishy-washy, double-minded stuff. I'm going to plant myself in the word of God and in the, in, in, in the, in the heart of God. And I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to be moved anymore. And they get grounded. And then that word now, then the fourth dimension of the word, and then that word there is going to produce. It's going to produce. Once they, did, once they get to that dimension of being good ground, it's going to produce. Now it's going to be produced. To, the results they're going to produce are going to be produced based upon the degree of revelation they have concerning the word of God. And as they become more proficient in the word of God, they'll find out that it will come from 30, 60, 100 fold. And so you got to break these mindsets and these sacred cows and say, oh, no, it's impossible for anybody to go for the 100% to be fully functioning in the word of God. Well, Christ wouldn't have said it if it's not possible. Right. So the idea is that everything is based upon a decision. Everything is based upon a decision, trust me. Everything that we're presented with, God says, nothing will come upon us unaware. That's his promise. Mm -hmm. You have, a, you, at, at, if, even if it's not with a split second, you have a split second to make a decision. When you're confronted with temptation, you got a split second to make a decision. You can say yes or no. And God gives you that. He even give Jezebel, space to repent. Right. You got time to repent. So the idea is whenever we're confronted with something, if somebody comes to us, road rage, you got a split second to make a decision. You can either ignore them people and keep driving, or you can let that offense drag you into it, and there you are, both of y'all, you know, getting yourself into trouble. Somebody can bring you a lie. You got a, you got a split second to make a decision. You can either hear and receive it, or you can say, no, I resist that. I commanded to go away from me. Yeah. Offense, listen to me, people. Offense is holding a lot of Christians in areas that's causing the word to be unfruitful because the Bible says a man that is offended is like a, a walled city. And once you get offended, the love mm -hmm. stops operating. And once the love stops operating, faith stops operating. You start walking in unforgiveness and bitterness. And the word, the word can't produce in that type of soil. That, 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 it doesn't work. That word is unfruitful from that point on. So that's why we got to make sure that the soil of our heart is perfect in love because it, it, it conquers all. There's no way. There's no way that the word won't manifest in a heart that's filled with love. No way. I don't care. who. Think about children. Think about children. You can reprimand them, uh, punish them, and they'll come right back to you and love you like, Nothing's ever happened. That's the kind of heart. And that's what Jesus said. He said, except you enter the kingdom as a little child, you should have no eyes into. So the idea is to have that, that mindset like a little child. They easily and quickly to forget and forgive. Mm -hmm. And so that we have to be that same way. But we would get to be so stubborn. Well, so and so and so hurt. And I've been hurt so many times. Listen, I don't want to sound insensitive, but dead men and dead women don't feel nothing. And I know that may sound like, uh, yeah, that's easier said than done. For us to become proficient in the things of God, we've got to get to where Christ says, and we got to trust him. If he says, and I thought about this, if he says, love your enemies, my God, that's a hard saying. So you mean to tell me that if I got to love my enemies, is it really hard to love my husband, love my children, 
love my spouse. Is it really that hard? Regardless of how they treat me, I got to walk how he says walk so that that fruit would be, that word would be fruitful in your life. So if he says walk in love and somebody despitefully use you, talk about you like a dog, running your name up and down throughout the community and in the neighborhood, and you know what they're saying is a lie. Jesus said it's better for you to be persecuted for righteousness sake and he says, don't overcome evil with evil, overcome evil with good. Mm -hmm. So you maintain your integrity. Says, I don't care what they say, I'm going to love them. Yes. I'm not going to say anything ill. I'm not going to even try to protect myself. I'm going to walk the way God says, because the word, when God says, love my enemy, that's the word he gave me. And that word is going to produce a hundredfold in my life because I would not allow anything to stop me from prospering in the things of God. I will not let my prayers be hindered by somebody not liking right. me. And I get an offense and walk in unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. This word has to produce in my life. And we got too many Christians that are walking around talking about, well, you know, they, they hurt me and, and I, 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 you know, I forgive them. But no, 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 no. We can hear it in your tone. We can see it mm -hmm. in your body language. Right. Forgiveness has to come to place in our life. And so when that word is sown, and when that word is sown in your heart, forgive, love. Mm -hmm. You got a decision to make. Yeah. Am I, is my heart in a position to receive that? And says, Lord, think about it. Stephen had his, his heart, his heart was perfected in love. Mm -hmm. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. He learned that from Jesus. Yes. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's not easy to do. But it is when the word is fruitful in your life, when that word is produced in your life because you heard what he said. So we go back to what Jesus said and all the things that Jesus said. Even, even in believing for provision for your life, if he said it, even for the works of the ministry, if he said it, this word is going to produce a hundredfold in my life. But now think about it. He says that the odds are stacked against you. It's stacked against you. He says... I, I hate to use the percentage, but it's just, it makes it simple. Four types of people, four types of dimension. Wayside, word is unfruitful, it will not produce. Stony ground, the word is unfruitful, it will not produce anything. Thorny ground, the word is unfruitful, and it will not produce anything. Mm -hmm. It's only that 25% that's going to hear the word, that has heart, that is prepared to be good soil to receive the word, and then within that, that range varies depending upon the, the, uh, the revelation that you have in the Word. So let's listen to what it says in John 15, 7 through 8. Listen to this now. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. You hear what he said? That you may bear much fruit. Yeah. So God is looking for us to bear fruit. And listen to what he says. The fruit that you bear is going to be produced from the word that abides in you. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't say that no better way. The fruit that you produce is going to be determined and based upon the word that abides in you. So away with all of those Christians that know the Bible, but we're not operating in it. That, so, if, so if John, who's known as the, the disciple of love, Begins to talk about God is love. If God is in you, it says, how dwell the love of God in you if we hate our brethren and we're to love one another? And Jesus said that these, they shall know that you are my disciples. How? How? And they see that you have love one for Love one another. for another. So if the church is operating in the word that Jesus has spoken to us and if that word abiding us, why is there so much envy and strife and division in his body mm -hmm. makes absolutely no sense. So you got to make up your mind. I'm not, that word's not going to be falling by the wayside on me. That word's not going to be stony ground in me. That word's not going to fall on thorny ground. That word's going to fall on good ground. I don't care what everybody else do. Everybody else can walk in their feelings. Everybody else can be upset. Everybody else can be offended. But it's for me and my soil, my heart, I'm going to receive what Jesus said. And that word is going to produce in my life because I declare and decree that I am good soil. And I don't just want to operate 30% well. I'm 30% forgiving, 30% loving. I want to walk in the totality of the love of God. Paul says, if 
tinkling cymbals and brass don't mean anything. If, if I had faith that could move mountains, if I don't have love, I'm nothing. Right. So they understood the power of love. And so if God is love and we should walk in love and faith working by love, then that love has to be perfected in us to produce fruit. Mm -hmm. Now watch this here. A lot of people want to walk in the, the, the gifts of the Spirit, but they don't want to manifest the fruits of the Spirit. Love, gentleness, peace. So the idea is, if, if the Holy Spirit is in us and we're allowing him to, how can I say, know us, then something should produce. And if nothing's being produced, look at how you're speaking in tongues. If we don't see no fruit, there's no intimacy. There's no way you can be intimate. Hear me, look at me. Give me, there's no way you can be intimate with the Holy Spirit and not produce fruit. There's no way I could be intimate with this woman, all things be equal, and we not produce an offspring. Right. So the idea is we're going to, so, so we ought to see some evidence that's produced in your life and see what are you manifesting. What are you manifesting? So a lot of you, so, so when I'm talking about manifesting a hundredfold, I'm talking about everything that God has for us. Yeah. Healing provision, our behavior, our character, our conduct, our walk with God, our relationship with God. He wants us to walk in the full stash and the full measure of Christ. To Christ be formed in us. To Christ be formed. Paul says, I am groaning with birth pains until Christ be formed in you. And so that is God wants this word to manifest in our lives a hundredfold. And so when we set our minds to do those things, then we can go for it. Because see, you're going you're gonna to go wherever you set your sight. You set your sight low, that's where you're going to go. You could be driving down the street. I don't care how wonderful of a driver you are. If you put your eyesight on the side of the road, that car is coming to the side of the road. And just in a split second, you can fall you can run off the road. So the idea is you want to make sure that you keep your eyes on the word. And so how did God say we're able to be successful? To meditate on the word day and night. So let's take the scripture slowly. If you, so he's, so he, he's using the word if because he says it determines, it depends on you. Because I told you, the majority is going to fail. And I'm not saying that to discourage you. I'm saying that to encourage you. Say, hey, be one of the ones that make up your mind that as far as me, mm -hmm. in this house, I'm making sure that this heart is good ground to receive the word of God. So I'm not going to just... So if I hear something I don't understand, I'm not going to just walk away with it. I'm going to sit there and meditate and say, okay, Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying? I'm not going to let this be hidden from me. You said that I should know all things by the Holy Spirit. So if, if, this, if I read this and I don't understand, that means this, that's something hidden for me. Not from me, but for me. So I'm going to sit here and I'm not going to move until I get a revelation of what this is. And so now I pray to the Lord, the, the, my, the eyes of my understanding be enlightened that I may know the mysteries of the kingdom of God concerning this scripture. So now, Lord, I believe that you're going to open up to me the mysteries of this scripture, that I may walk therein, and that this word may abide in me and produce fruit in my life. So therefore, I believe I receive the enlightenment and revelation from this word by the Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit, you are my teacher. Teach me what thus said these scriptures, and I believe I receive in Jesus' name. I thank you that I know all things, even the word of God, and you said I know all things. So now... Seeing that I know all things, reveal this to me that I may know it in totality and in deed. Mm -hmm. And then you sit there and you meditate and all of a sudden everything leaps up off the page into your eyes. And you're like, wow, wow. And when he give it to you, no man can take it away from you. Right. And so then that word gets in you, then you got to make sure it abides. See, love abides in a lot of us until we're offended. Ah, oh my God. I've never seen so many people that walks away from great relationships all because of one word of offense. I've seen friendships. Oh, you my BFF, and you my this and you my that. One little thing, one little thing. I've seen people, and, 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 being, and being a pastor, this is sad to say, there have been people we've poured our hearts out to, gave them everything they need. One little thing. And, and half of the time, it was just something the enemy did that caused them to be offended. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Pastor, we having a birthday party. Can we use the church sanctuary for so on and so on? Well, we're going to be having a, you know, a program now. Oh, excuse me. Okay, I didn't see anything wrong. We're going to be using, but if you want to use it the following day, you can. Well, no, I need the birthday. 
and then they walk away. And they, never mind that for 12 and 14, 15. Now, this is, I, I made that up. This never happened. I made, I just made that up because, you know, the folks are now, they sort of like, ooh, what, what happened? Never happened. That, that was just made up. I'm just giving an example because I don't like to use real stories because if you tell real stories, people are like, you were talking about me, and then the offense has just come. But the idea that people are so easily get offended. We got so many leaders. People talking about, oh, so church hurt. You'd be, you'd be surprised at the daggers and the broken hearts of men and women of God. You think about it. You just got one coming at you. They got hundreds of people coming at them. Everybody got different personalities, different attitudes, different wants, needs, desires, demands. And they're coming all at the man and woman of God. And everybody got their little feelings on their shoulders and their sleeves. And you can't say this to that one. You can't you watch, how, watch how you preach the word. Because if you preach the word a certain way, you know, you were talking about me. That's why I don't like to talk to people before I go in the air or go in the word or preach the sermon. Because if you preach something, and then it, it, it puts a choke chain on you. Because, man, I was going to teach that, but now I can't teach because so-and-so says that. And if I say that, they're going to think I'm talking about them. But I'm not thinking about them. And so, therefore, the word gets silent. Because, sure enough, if you talk about that, I just got through talking to him. And I just told him. And they're offended, and so it's just it's just so so we're so easy to, to get offended. But wonder what would happen if the word that was sown in our heart say, "Love your enemy, do good unto them that despitefully use you, pray for them." If that word abided in us, and we were good soil to receive it, and we said, "I'm going to allow that word to produce." 36 and 104, we wouldn't see so much offense in the church. We wouldn't so, see so much envy, strife, and jealousy backbiting in the church. We'll see a church that's walking in so much love. Because think about it. Mm. Peter could have definitely got offended at Paul when Paul said, I would stood him before all. Mm -hmm. Peter could have got offended. Wait a minute, brother. Hold, 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 Paul. Before the only thing you know about Jesus is, is what, that little, that little uh, road to Damascus. Mm -hmm. We walked with him for three and a half years. The little road to the Max is don't trump what we did. And he could have got offended. No, Peter humbled himself. Why? He says, I'm not going to walk in offense. Why? Because the word that Jesus spoke to me, love, abides in me. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, I love my brother Paul and I embrace him. And what he said was right. Mm -hmm. Paul said this here. Now, watch this here. Paul says, rebuke before all that others may fear. You can't do that these days. Mm -hmm. There was a pastor that people were saying it all crazy. They, 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 were, they were not saying it right. The musician came in late, and the pastor says, listen, if you're, not, if you're not going to come in on time, don't come at all. And you should see the coming. Oh, he shouldn't have said that. Oh, he shouldn't have did that. Oh, he was out of line. Oh, that's how you hurt people feeling. And that's, that's, that's flesh. That's carnal. That's, that's all carnal. Because my thing is, why? And all the man said was, we take, we take for granted and lightly the things of God, in which is true. It's we take for granted and take light. So you think you can just walk in here and treat God any kind of way. And as a man of God, he had the right to do that because Paul says, wait a minute. You rebuke him that others may fear. So don't, don't come in. If you're a leader in this church, you shouldn't come in. But that carnality, the church is so carnal, the word of God is not abiding in them. That Jesus, the, the Bible says that we should mind how we walk in the house of God. But because that we're not spiritual, we're carnal, the first thing we see is somebody being offended. Oh, he offended that person. No, he rebuked that person. Why? And he had rightfully so because they hold an office. And so they shouldn't be late. Because if your boss saw you come in late, you don't think you're going to get called in the office? Mm -hmm. You don't think you're going to say, hey, listen, and everybody's going to know your business. <laughs> Whether you got called in the office or not, you're going to know your business. Well, you just pull them to the side. No, that's not what Paul said. Paul said rebuke before all. So you got a lot of Christians that say, no, what he did was wrong. And you can take the scripture. Now, well, here's what Paul says. If they sin in the open, rebuke before all. Rebuke before all. Right. Well, you know, well, I know that's what the word says, but, and we're not going to produce any fruit. Why? Because what? We are not, that word is not, uh, we're, we're not allowing our heart to be good ground to produce the fruit. Now, my thing is, if people talk, did God the way they're supposed to, wouldn't be no rebuke. You wouldn't have to rebuke people because my thing is, if you're going to do anything for God, that word should be in you for your position and for what you do to make sure. We, and we we do. People take the things of God so lightly. You know, people got positions and they show up either right at time or show up late. And you're like, okay, but nobody can beat you lifting your hands and talking about how much you love God. And God's saying, mm -mm. your sacrifice is tainted. Now remember, Cain often was not received. Because the Bible said he brought his in the process of time 
when he felt like it and he brought God anything. And God didn't receive it. And he was mad at his brother Abel because God had respected his offering. Wasn't that God desired, desired and or took um, respect of Cain, Abel offered over Cain? It's the idea of Cain's attitude and how he did it. Yeah. And so when it comes to the things of God, we shouldn't have the wrong attitude. That when it comes to God, we give him everything we have. Because if you're, if you're to the place where I can't be late for my job, I can't be late for the things of God. Mm-hmm. So the idea is we got to make, make sure God that wait, no, 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 no. This job is just something you give me that I may have seed and bring for provision. But you, God, you come first. You will come first and I'll, I'll give you the best in everything that I have. So that's how we have to have that mindset. But that's going to only happen and produce that hundredfold based upon your heart receiving it. Because if you watch this. It says, a carnal mind cannot receive the things of God, neither can it please God, for it is an enmity against God. So a lot of things we filter through our flesh, through our carnal mind, through our fleshly senses, and we try to perceive. That's why God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, are my, your, way, my, your ways are not my ways. You don't, you, we don't think alike. And so when somebody says, when it comes to God, watch this here. We're going to let, read one last scripture. There's a lot of debate that you hear people saying, Oh, that man of God, he, he, he went out doing the, word of, the will of God, but he lost his family. Oh, he should have took care of his family first. Oh, he should have put his family first. Oh, he should have... No, okay. See, that's the corner of mind thinking. But if we go back and read the word, Jesus says, I come to bring a variant in the family. And this is what Christ is. No. So, so watch this. Because it's going to open a lot of your eyes because a lot of you may have felt that way. He says, if you love mother and father more than me, you're not worthy of me. If you love sister, brother, or your sons and daughters more than me, you're not worthy of me. Now, I'm getting to the point where we're talking about walking and manifesting a hundredfold because that's part of operating and manifesting a hundredfold. Because if, if he says that you release all those things, all those things for my sake and the gospel's sake. You hear that? For my sake and the gospel's sake. You shall receive a hundredfold of all those things. So he already knew that the men were going to lose some things. John G. Lake, he lost his first family, but God gave him another one. The fact of the matter is we're supposed to respect the gift and the calling that God to call the man and follow the man. If you have a problem with the man following God, you don't have a problem with the man. You have a problem with God. That's what God told Samuel. He said, Samuel, they're not, re- dis- they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. And Jesus said, if they reject you, they're not rejecting you. They rejected me. And they rejected my father that sent me. So the idea of this is for the gospel and for the gospel's sake, for Christ and the gospel's sake, then we should be to point He and the gospel comes first. And the only way that family is going to be torn apart is people in the family don't want to follow the things of God. Because if they follow the things of God, they're going to be right there with that man wherever he goes. Mm -hmm. And we are letting our carnal mind and our fleshly mind dictate the things of God. And we're coming up short and we're not producing anything and we're unfruitful. And so the idea is he wants us to be fruitful. But the only way we're going to be able to be fruitful is we got to know the word of God and stop trying to logically think things through through our corner mind. Because our corner mind, there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the ways there are is death. Because we think we know everything and God says we don't know anything. And it's our ignorance of the word of God and the things of God that's causing us to come up short. And we say, why things are not happening when I pray to God? Go back and check your word. What's abiding in you? And some of us got the wrong thing abiding in us. Go back and see what the word says. And then we settle and say, okay, here is where I missed it. Here is where I lost it. Let's read one last scripture and then close. We got about two minutes. Um, because there's a process of time that takes place. So we, we understand that it's very vital that we be fruitful. The word of God must produce in our life. So listen, Holy Ghost has said a lot of things. And give us a lot of things to think about, especially with offense and market and love. That is not in the notes. That was not in my um, uh, heart and spirit to speak. But he brought those out, and I feel confident in it. That who we get that fixed. That's a good example of how to walk in and manifest a hundredfold. So because that'll help us manifest a lot of things. Because we get that love. If we get our love walk right, mm-hmm. my God. There's nothing that can stop us. Right. If faith works by love, love is the fruit of the spirit. Mm-hmm. It, 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 love covers all things. Love covers the multitudes of sin. Lo- everything is done in love. God is love and we're full of God. We're full of love. Man, there's nothing that we can't accomplish 
everything we do from here on out will be sweatless victory. We'll have the victory over everything. So let's read our last scripture. We're going to close out because you have to understand how the process works because a lot of people get frustrated. Here's in that, that area, the thorny grounds. This here, a lot of people fall prey to the thorny ground in that dimension, if you're going to talk about just the dimensions of it, right here. So let's read uh, uh, Mark 4.28. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. So Jesus is saying that there's a process, and we have to look at it for things that shall come to pass, is that, say, hey, first you're going to get the blade. Because, you know, when the farmer got out there plant, he says, man, it's been a while since I've been spending almost two weeks. He says, I play this thing, I don't see anything. Then he goes out there, then he sees a little blade coming up. Mm -hmm. He says, okay, we're working with something now. And then all of a sudden you begin to see the plants grow, 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 before, and then the next time it's the harvest. So that, that's how with the things of God. You give them that relationship. You believe in God for healing. You believe in God for finances. You believe in God to fix your heart that you can walk in love and walk in, in, in forgiveness. All those things may take a process of time. God is not in the, the, the fast food, the fast, you know, instant microwave thing. He is into developing us to perfection. And that, that, that comes with time and a process. So we have to trust the process of understanding that the word of God has to get planted in our heart and we have to give it that process of time to produce. So the idea is that we have to allow it to work and we have to be patient. We have to let patience have a perfect work and that after you've done the will of God that you receive it through patience. So let's not be cliche. Patience is a virtue. No, patience is what you need. And you got to have it. So this just can't come out of your mouth. You have to operate. Actually, listen, mm -hmm. you have to actually walk in these things. Yeah. Or we're going to keep coming up short and not being unfruitful. So now, now that you know that, will you say something? Yeah. Go ahead. Well, you just said to be patient and walk in these things. I was trying to add something to when you were uh, speaking about the offense. Mm -hmm. uh, when the word tells us it's a friend loves that word. All times. All times. Regardless of whether they love you back or yeah, not. I, I see. Um, that's what I see a lot, you know, people just fall out for uh, just little or nothing. And he, so when they don't understand you, you hear what you, you love. When, when, you know, they just acting funny, mm -hmm. you, you love. Get this, people. So that's the thing right there. And uh, I was admonishing a young lady even just on yesterday concerning that because it was, you know, when people get busy, I just say, well, sometimes we all get busy. Your time is not their time. My time is not your time. And so, but, you know, then that's whenever the presumptuous sin comes in because we assume that they acted funny or we assume that they mad at us and it's not a fact. Mm -hmm. And those are the type of sins that gets us in trouble. Yes. It, it's, it's being presumptuous. You, you assume you don't try to... Uh, just be patient to wait, you know, to see or seek a thing out. And, you know, and so that's the thing. You have to be patient and you have to know that people, you know, have lives. They have things sometimes that comes up, throws the schedule off when they used to call you every day at the same time and we talk this time and that's mm -hmm. our time. Times change. Yes. You know, and so we have to leave room for that and allow people room to grow. And sometimes people, are go, they go through things and, and and they having, uh, you know, difficulties sometimes of coming quickly out of things. And so sometimes there's a time that you just have to revert and you got to get with God. You got to be working on something, letting God work on you. And so he don't always do that with people there. God wants you alone at times. You know, he wants you to himself to work on you, you know, not the people that we getting down there praying about this saying, Lord, they doing me wrong, this and that. He said, now you come here, mm -hmm. you know, but we got to remember a friend loves at all, all times. times. So when they act crazy, you love. And so, well, they need to be loving me too. No, it ain't about them. It's about what you do. Because you keep your um, record clean. You keep your sleigh clean. And so, guess what? The blessings continue to flow. And so, no matter what p other people are doing or what it seems like they may be doing, I just try to practice it and say, hey, I just need to make sure I'm doing the right thing. Yes. That's what God's looking at concerning me. You know, and it didn't give me a right to 
be any other way except for to um, be obedient to God. And so guess what? Your faith is going to be tried, and we keep forgetting that. So in relationships, the faith that you have, the love that you have, faith working by love, the love that you have, the faith that you have toward that relationship will be tried. Just like your relationship with God. Because you love God and you and your faith in God, in that relationship, anything that you speak toward him, uh, praiseworthy and all things that he do for you, he loving on you, you loving him back, the devil going to try it and he come to try that word of an exhortation that you have toward what God did, that testimony. What? So what does it do? It inflict pain up on yours and God relationship because he's trying to get you uh, uh, to um, just look at God sideways. So with the things that he throw at it, you know, mm-hmm. you, so it's being tried, you know, so every relationship. So if it's being tried with you and God, it's going to be tried with every, everything else. And so we have to walk in faith, in love, in love at all times, to be that friend, to be faithful to God at all times. And so that is, um, it takes patience. And, you know, and then at the same time, you reminding yourself to love at all times, not about the other person you love. You know, you do the right thing. Keep it flowing, you know, so your blessings continue. Yeah. yeah. Just because uh, just you say you love, that God's, that God's not impressed with our lips. The idea is, okay, show me that you walk in love. So the idea is that's our faith walk for our faith project for this week. And I think it's a very important one. Mm-hmm that we do manifest the love of God that he said that we to have this week. And it's going to help us build, to continue to build that foundation. Now, you make up your mind. I don't care what anybody else do. I will not be offended. I will not walk in offense because it's not about them. It's about me and what God told me to do. And so like what my mama said one time, mm-hmm. we all got in trouble. And uh, I was the one that was giving the instructions. And so she was not concerned about the other one. She says, what did I tell you? Mm-hmm. And so that's what God says to us. Uh, even when Peter, when Jesus, when Jesus told Peter, follow me, and the other disciples follow, he says, Lord, what about him? He says, don't worry about him. Don't worry about him. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to you. So the idea is, so, so God has commanded us. Here's that. The sower sows the word. We're going to close and pray. The sower sows the word. Love your enemy. Love your neighbor as yourself. Matter of fact, those are the says, Love God. Love your neighbor. He says, if you do those two things, man, you can't go wrong. Mm-hmm. So the idea is, when you hear love, you do it. Say, say, that's me. That's, that's me. That's me. So the idea is, you heard it. You heard, but Lord, what about them? No, 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 no. I deal with them later, but I'm talking to you. I told you. Well, Lord, they didn't love me. For, no, 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 no. What did I tell you? You said, you said love. Okay, so that's, so the word, that word, I'm sowing the word that Christ sowed to us. Right about, I'm saying you love your enemy. You love your neighbor. You allow love to operate in your life. Don't be moved. So it's not about what other people do or don't do. Who forsook you? Who wasn't for you? Who didn't stand with you? You make up your mind that you're going to be like God and love in spite of because you have been commanded by God and that word has been sown in your heart. Now you got a decision to make. Right. Either it's going to be by the wayside, stony ground, thorny ground, or you, can, you, you make up your mind to make it good ground and say, Lord, I, just, I don't, just, don't want to just uh, love 30%, 60%. I want to love in totality. I want to love like you love. And this is the love that we have that we give our lives for the brethren. So therefore I can bear the burden. Therefore I can take the wrong for the right. Mm-hmm. I can do all those things. Why? Because the love of God dwelleth in my heart and it constrains me to love my neighbor. And when that is perfected in us, it'll be so proficient. And so we're, our whole idea is to manifest that. So with that said, that concludes this teaching. Be fruitful. So let that word of love it's like that's what the Holy Spirit was drilling in. Let the, let, the, let the seed of love now be manifest in your heart and produce fruit a hundredfold. A hundredfold. And make up your mind. I'm not, I'm not moved by what other people say or do. I'm going to walk in this here. And not just for this week. <laughs> I'm gonna, not just for this week. This is, this is going to be the week to get it grounded and rooted. And then you walk in it from here on out. No. So let's pray. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, if there be any sick in their body tonight. 
I declare and decree the word that I've spoken that I'll be a hundredfold manifestation of healing for those to send your word and heal them from the crown of the head to the soles of their feet. I command them to be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I receive and go have I number such as I have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Receive a life in your body for the spirit of life in Christ Jesus makes you free from the law of sin and death. And we give Jesus praise for it. We call it done in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever sickness, malady, or malfunction may be going on in your body, I command that it goes now. Every spirit that is not like God that is influencing you or tormenting, I command it to go now in Jesus' name. I declare that you are free and free indeed in Jesus' name. And for all of you that are obedient to operating in the principles of giving seed time and harvest, I command the harvest to come into your life right now. For every need that you have, let it be supplied according to the riches of God. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. So now if there's anything in your body, I want you to do something you couldn't do before. Move, move what you couldn't move before. Shake what you couldn't shake before. And if you need a little money, go in there and shake that pocketbook and say, I command you to grow. Amen. That's right. <laughs> I command you to be gone. On debts, I command you to go. Listen, God loves you and he wants you to receive this word and he wants you to go for everything. And he wants you to don't just manifest 6 to 30. The Lord knows he don't want you to be right away, sad, stone around, throwing around. But he's encouraging you to say, hey, listen. You need to get this hundredfold. Go for it. So at least if you fall short, you won't fall without. And I, I, I thought thinking about this. Thing. So if you fall short, you won't fall not. In other words, you won't fall without anything. So mm-hmm. let's go for the hundredfold. My job is as a coach to push you for all that you can get from God and to walk in his word in totality and manifest a hundredfold because we got a lot more to cover and we're going to take it who knows we may be preaching this for a year or two but we're going to do that until the believer grows up to the full stash and measure of Christ and walk in it and be as effective as the Lord would have us to be in Jesus name we love you we'll see you next week yeah, yeah, yeah. it was the effectual fervency of his prayer with passion that evaded much get excited Get ready, get set, because we're about to go. I'm here to tell you, the word is going to spread. Whatever you need, God's got it. There's some folk down there that just not concerned about they for it no more. If you need help in your house, where the enemy is trying to come in and take over, there's some folk down there, you ain't got to find but one, baby. Just find you one. They will pray effectually and fervently for you and God will come in and arrest that devil and put him out. I need some soldiers. I need some warriors because this means war.